Welcome back. If it is joined us to watch the news at 10, coming to you live from Lagos, a reminder of our major stories. Senate passes anti-corruption bill that will allow mutual assistance in criminal matters between Nigeria and other countries. IPOP must solve in a fresh test of support base in the southeast as residents obey sit-at-home order. House of Representatives affirms faith in democratic rule, also considers motion for a new minimum wage. White House Communications Director Mike Dubke resigns only three months after being hired by President Donald Trump. For more on our top stories and others, please visit our websites, channelstv.com and youtube.com slash channelsweb. You can also watch us on the go on your mobile device, log on to m.channelstv.com or download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows phones from their respective stores. A reminder here, the have of the Channels TV and Channels 24 app will give you access to news and updates. You also have the eyewitness feature so you can be part of the news. Just install the app and tap and swipe to reveal the eyewitness menu and follow the instructions. Well, we have some of the pictures that you sent into our portal. Let's begin with this one from Quara State showing the road, a bad shape of the road, which our eyewitness reporter says connects many communities, among them GGN Road and Patigi. He raises concerns over how much difficulty residents have gone through since the road became like this. Well, staying with roads uh, is this one from Oka, the Anambra state capital, showing the flooded road, which our eyewitness reporter says connects Namdi Azikiwe University to neighboring communities. He pleads with government and well-meaning Nigerians to help fix it. From Israel Koko in Ondo state comes this image showing the bad road, which our eyewitness reporter says connects the state with other states. He says the bad shape of the road has made it a den of robbers. He pleads with the federal government to do something urgently. And here in Lagos is this image from additional streets in the Jashateru area of the state. We're looking at a bad road which our eyewitness reporter says has become a nightmare for residents. Our journey ends in Iwo Road in Ibadan, the Oyo State Capital. We see a heap of filth at the city centre. Eyewitness reporter wants this cleared. Thanks for sending in those pictures and please keep them coming. Now, we, reports just coming in from Calabar says uh, three policemen this evening died as their station was said to have been set ablaze. According to the police PRO, Jimo Moshud, this followed a clash between some naval officers and men of the Nigeria Police Force in Calabar. Mr. Mashud reports that the misunderstanding happened at a checkpoint opposite the Navy barracks in Akim area of the town. He says trouble began after a policeman stopped a naval officer at uh, Akim police checkpoint, but he allegedly refused to stop and this led to a shootout. The Navy reportedly mobilized this evening and set the police station ablaze again. Three policemen have died following a shootout between policemen and naval officers following a misunderstanding at a checkpoint near Akim Police Station in Calabar. Further south, the governor of Ikiti State and the chairman of the People's Democratic Party Governors Forum, Mr. Ayo Fayoshi, says the All Progressives Congress leadership has performed below expectation. The governor in a press conference today in Lagos explains that the handling of the economy by the Buhari government is unacceptable. He then called on the president to resign. Two years of Buhari's change agenda of Buhari's presidency is what I describe as a misadventure for Nigerians. Recession, downturn and a college resulting in a badly devalued currency the Naira. We went as far as 500 and something. Thank God it's getting better. Nigeria is in the worst ever debt profile. Worst ever. A debt profile is second to none. We borrow on daily basis. And to what it matters, they take this money from source against the Supreme Court judgment that says all money must accrued to the Federation consolidated account to be shared by all tiers of government. 
there's no way you can be taking bonds without committing the money from source abroad. This is regrettable as the federal government continue to cheat on the states and the local government. I have gone to court in this respect and I've asked them to make public the documents for which they have used to borrow money or which they, they, they are still using to borrow money. While praying for our president to recover very quickly, why is he finding it difficult to be morally upright and resign? Knowing the hardship, his redundancy is causing the economy and the masses. Egypt State Governor Ayodele Fayashe. Now, in response to the call for the president to resign, the media assistant to the president, Mr. Garbashe, who says the demand is misplaced, he refers to Governor Fayashe as one who cherishes publicity a lot and could do anything to be heard every other day. He was speaking on our program, Politics Today. Glad that you are um, um, inviting me to speak on Governor Fayashe. You know, if you follow the presidency, we don't talk when he talks. Because he, he's, he, he's desperate for publicity, so we don't talk when he talks. We have a system. We have a constitution that governs the country. And the constitution is very clear about how the country runs. This country has a tripod of authority in terms of power, distribution of political power. You have the parliament, which is doing its own work. You have the judiciary, which is running. You have the executive, which is be running government. We don't have any problem with this. So therefore, if anybody has a problem with the Constitution, they should go and change it. It's been a torturous journey for the All Progressives Congress government, but after two years, a party and its supporters believe a lot has been achieved, particularly on providing focus for governance, moving the country out of recession and decimating Boko Haram. Our correspondent Ayotune Balogun reports on the positives of the present Mamadou Buhari administration. It's two years into the life of the Buhari administration. The ruling APC government, after its inauguration on May 29, 2015, promised to provide purposeful governance to Nigerians. This president is sincere. Sincerity of purpose is very, very uh, much of a, something that embraces integrity. Integrity of Mr. President is very key. You must really um, encourage him to continue. Another area the APC government may be satisfied with itself is on the economy. And in spite of the recession, government says Nigeria's economy is now on the path to recovery. The, the indications are moving, are, are moving north. In other words, they are getting, we are getting more and more positive. Uh, while you're in a recession, two things could happen. You could get, it could get worse and it could get better. Clearly in our situation, it's getting much, much better. And that's because we, we have faced, you know, uh, very squarely, the task of revamping the economy. The acting president in a speech on Democracy Day also says the interventions initiated for the economy can affect the lives of Nigerians positively. Take the example of our social investment program, which kicked off at the end of 2016. Its homegrown school feeding component is now feeding more than one million primary school children across seven states and will be feeding three million by the end of the year. The NPAR, another component, has engaged 200,000 unemployed graduates. Roads and power projects are going on in every part of the country. On the question of power, this problem can be solved. But it just needs some more detailed and methodical output. We've completed transmission projects in places like Okada, in places like Makodi. And so that 5,000 that went to 3,000, those people who didn't partake at all are now getting some energy. The present-day government says it's committed to bringing back the remaining Cuba girls from Boko Haram captivity, even as the administration says that the insurgents are being dealt with in the Northeast by the military. With just two years left, 
The Buhari administration says it's optimistic of achieving more successes based on its campaign promises to Nigerians. Ayotunde Balogun, Channels Television News. Joining us now on the news at 10 to discuss the APC government's performance these two years is Senate Majority Leader Ahmed Lawan. He joins us from our Abuja studios. Senator Lawan, thank you for joining us on the news at 10. I appreciate you joining us tonight. You belong to the APC. How do you think your government has fared these two years? Thank you very much uh, for that question. Uh, happy Democracy Day in Arias. Uh, I want to say that the APC federal government has performed uh, optimally so far in two major areas and has done well in the third area. If you don't know where you started your journey from and where you are today, you wouldn't know how far you have traveled. Let me start by saying that in the area of uh, fighting insurgency and terrorism, before 2015, when the President Muhammad Buhari took oath of office, we lost over 17 local governments in Borno State. We lost about three local governments in Yobe. We lost a similar number, about three, in Adamawa. And in fact, Boko Haram had a field day, and they established a caliphate with headquarters in Mubi. President Muhammad Buhari, immediately after his uh, swearing in, directed our army to move their command headquarters to Borno State, to Meduguri particularly, the epicenter of the fight against uh, the insurgency. And uh, you will agree with me that today there is no one inch of land of this country that is under the control of Boko Haram, or indeed any insurgent group. This is to tell you how far we have come, having been subjected to serious security situation in the Northeast particularly. In the area of fighting corruption, and that's the second aspect of our campaign promise, today the executive arm of government, the president, and the National Assembly are on the same page. We are fighting corruption together. The National Assembly is enabling the executive of the government through legislation. I'm happy to report that today in the Senate, we pass an anti-corruption law that is the mutual legal assistance in criminal uh, cases or activities between Nigeria and other foreign countries. This, by the time the House of Representatives uh, concur with it and the president signs will go a long way in supporting the anti-corruption fight not only in Nigeria but even outside the country. Nigeria will be better for it. Mm. We have so many cases of course pending in courts. Our court system of course at the moment is slow Senator Lawan. but I want to assure you that the judiciary is also on board. Senator Lawan, part, Senator Lawan, I'm so sorry to interrupt the, but um, the, there's just the two years left. There's just two years left to this, to the end of this administration, and uh, Nigeria is still, you know, very hopeful that a lot to be achieved within this remaining time. Um, why should Nigerians keep proposing, you know, confidence in this administration? And what really can this administration achieve within the two years? What we can achieve, you can see from what we are doing today. Our economy suffered at the beginning because of so many variables that were never contemplated but we all agree that we are coming out of recession the government has shown strong will and commitment to reviving the economy in fact today the acting president inaugurated the uh, nigerian industrial policy and competitiveness advisory council. These are some of the actions and, and efforts that the government is putting in place to ensure that we revive our economy. On our part in the legislature, we have passed so many important bills, and in fact, the, the acting president has signed two of them today mm. that will ensure 
that Nigerians have access to, to, to funds, to credits, and of course their credits are protected, and of, of course also encourage uh, foreign direct investment in the country. I believe that the two years that we have mm -hmm. ahead of us, by the grace of God, will see monumental improvement in our economy. So, uh, two years is, is a long time. We have started in 2015 so as a Lama. new administration. And I believe that I believe that we have we have we have done quite well so far. Senator, Senator Lawan, a lot of Nigerians will be holding you accountable to your words tonight. Thank you once again for joining us on the News at Ten. I'll be speaking with Senate Majority Leader Ahmed Lawan. But when the News at Ten returns, FCMB unveils portal to track federal government school feeding program plus business news. Do stay with us.